Today, I'd like to tell you about one ILD we're seeing more frequently, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF. IPF is a chronic and ultimately fatal ILD of unknown etiology, occurring mostly in adults over age 50 and characterized by a progressive and unpredictable decline in lung function. Recognizing IPF in a clinical setting can be difficult, requiring multidisciplinary communication. A critical diagnostic tool in use is high-resolution CT. Though chest radiographs occasionally show limited signs of IPF in patients with the disease, reticular opacities with a subpleural basilar predominance and traction bronchiectasis are identified with HRCT. As you can see here, opacities, while subtle at first, progress to form the hallmark honeycomb abnormalities in patients with IPF. The pathogenesis of IPF is not yet understood, but it's thought to begin with injury to the alveolar epithelial cells. Looking more closely, we see that in response to injury, a repair response ensues with the release of pro-fibrotic and pro-inflammatory mediators, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, connective tissue growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, and transforming growth factor beta, among others. In IPF, we believe the repair process is dysregulated with progressive fibrosis within the lung parenchyma. As part of the fibrotic process, or as a result of it, the alveolar epithelium becomes vulnerable to apoptosis, leading to further epithelial dysfunction and the distortion of lung architecture and function. The rate at which this process progresses is highly unpredictable from the time of diagnosis. The clinical course of the disease varies for each patient and can take several forms. Some IPF patients remain stable for years after diagnosis, while others, a minority, experience a rapid deterioration of lung function. The classic course, however, is thought to be a slow decline in lung function and a worsening of symptoms until respiratory failure or a complicating comorbidity occurs. Yet another course is characterized by periods of relative respiratory stability, followed by acute onset of symptoms and decreased lung function, as revealed by spirometric and radiographic evidence. These sudden periods of worsening or exacerbations can occur at any time during the course of IPF, adding to the unpredictability of the disease. Furthermore, the mortality of each exacerbation is significant, as indicated by the marked decline shown. There's a lot we don't know about these events. In some cases, they can be brought on by pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, cardiac failure, or other comorbidities. In other cases, cause cannot be identified. Presently, it's not known whether exacerbations are a natural acceleration of IPF. Likewise, it remains unclear whether these courses are discrete phenotypes, as many variables may affect the course of the disease. It's important to note that IPF carries a poor prognosis. In fact, IPF's mortality rate is higher than many cancers and all other idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. For most patients with IPF, the median survival rate is two to five years after diagnosis, with 20 to 40% of patients living to five years and some living considerably longer. In recent studies, some factors have been associated with an increased risk of mortality, including advanced age, increase in dyspnea, and FVC decline of 10% or more within six months from baseline testing, and increased fibrotic abnormalities as revealed by HRCT. Thus, careful monitoring of IPF every four to six months, as indicated by the ATS, ERS, JRS consensus guidelines, allows patients with progressive disease to be identified and is important for determining appropriate disease management. IPF is a devastating disease, but with proactive management, we can continue to help patients, supporting their physical and mental well-being as they cope with the burdens of the disease. Every day we learn more. In time, with further investigation and collaboration, we may have more treatment options. Thank you.